Welcome to a quest for metal. Today is a long time coming between the buried and me ranking. Now you guys voted for it, so here I am to deliver. Now Colors 2 just got released pretty much like last week, and holy shit, it's fucking awesome. You already know that though. It's took me a while to digest it. I mean a whole week. Wow, a whole fucking week. But yeah, a week to digest it, but you know, it's sunk its teeth in. And it's a damn mighty fine album, but we'll get to that. We'll see where it places on the list. Now, before I get started with my ranking, as usual, pop yours down below. What's your favourite Between the Buried and Me album? What's your least favourite? Is there any you think suck? Hmm, now that's a good question. Let me know down below, and let's just get stuck in with the ranking. Now, I know this will probably trigger Metal Trenches and some other people, but The Silent Circus is my least favourite by Between the Buried and Me. Yep. It is, and it's easily, it's one I don't really want to listen to again. Um, I don't hate it. I just, it's just not my kind of, my kind of music. I got into Between the Buried and Me through, actually, Automata, or Automata, how, however you say it. I got it into them through that. And that was my gateway, and I love all the proggy albums. And this is proggy to a degree, but it's more on the metalcore, mathcore kind of side of the things. More chaotic, more crazy. Which I, you know, I like in some bands, and El Nafrak does it fucking amazingly, but I'm not really a big fan of it here. And again, I enjoyed the album, but I just don't see myself returning to it. So, The Silent Circus is easily my least favourite, and you can kind of tell where this list is going to go for me putting that here, because next up is The Debut. And The Debut's a lot better, in my opinion. Um, I would revisit this, but it's kind of bland compared to a lot of other Between the Buried and Me albums. I mean... You know, look inside. It's kind of bland. It's good for what it delivers. It kind of, it kind of um, what's the word? Molds, not molds. Like fits in with all the metalcore albums that are coming around out around the same kind of time. Fits in nicely alongside them. Nothing crazy. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just solid tunes. Really engage. Well, it's not engaging. It's just it's just a good solid time. And I can't see any faults with it, uh, so it's just kind of okay, you know. It's just kind of on that mid level. It's an enjoyable album. It's nothing special. It's not gonna. It's not anything to write home about, you know. It's not anything to write home about. So that's why it's gonna come second to last because I did enjoy it more than the Silent Circus, and I will revisit it. But it wasn't. It didn't blow my fucking balls off, right? So it's coming here now for some more juicy controversy. You can kind of see this coming. Alaska is next. Yes, fucking Alaska. One of the most famous albums. One of the ones that kind of marked that trajectory into the prog sphere. And don't get me wrong, this is a massive step up. Those two albums, is, it's alright. It's a pretty good. This one is very good. Is it amazing? Is it perfect? Fuck no. I don't, th I don't think it is. It still has a lot of that um same same problems i have with the silent circus is on here but i think the songwriting's way better the songs are way more improved on this this album i can actually pick songs out and be like yeah i'd fucking re-listen to that again in a heartbeat whereas i couldn't do that in the silent circus there's not really any i really enjoyed to be honest um and the same goes for the self the same goes for the um debut where it's just kind of all, all pretty good but there's nothing stand out on alaska there's some fucking standout songs the Endless Obsession sounding very, like, dream fear to light, and the title track being very bouncy as well. This is the starting point of the greatness, in my opinion, and from the next album onwards, they just blew up. So, these three aside, the next ones, I all goddamn love, and it was so hard to rank, so I guess let's get ahead with that. Let's rip the band-aid off, because next is... Comet Ecliptic, yep, Comet Ecliptic is next. Yeah, you thought I was going to say Colors, didn't you? No, 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 we'll get to that. Comet Ecliptic is next. Kind of a mellow feeling album compared to a lot of the other ones, but it is in that prog sphere. The the kind of prog albums that I love by Between the Bear and Me, this fits in nicely with them, but I don't think it's quite as grandiose as Colors or Colors 2, or as epic as Parallax 2. Or is even as interesting as uh, Automata. So, yeah, I do enjoy Comet Ecliptic, but I would say it's easily the worst 
of the um, the prog metal side of Between the Barrier and Me. I would say it's easily worse, but again, the standout songs. There's a lot of songs I enjoy. The Coma Machine is a fun little song. Um, the songs on this one sound kind of bombastic and sound kind of like a... I don't want to say like an opera, but you know what I kind of mean? Everything's just larger than life on this album, which is good. Um, but I just think they just perfected it with another album, which will be my number one. But no spoilers here. Comet Ecliptic is still a fantastic album. It's just something has to come a bit lower. Sorry, Coma. It's fucking here. Automata is next. This is the album I got into the band from. Wild, I know. Most people either come in through the early ones or through like, I don't know, like Parallax or Colours, mainly Colours. For me it was this, um, especially Automata 2, which I fucking love, but I'm grouping them both together because they are part and parcel, is that, is that the right term? Probably not, Questy, you're just talking out your ass. Um, yeah, but both of them together, that's how you listen to it. That's how you goddamn listen to it. And I loved. The whole second half is amazing. The first half is a bit more subdued than the second half, but it's kind of like damnation and deliverance. We're talking about OPEF parallels here, you want to listen to them both because it has the mellower side and then it has the intense side, like deliverance. And it's the same here with Automata. And yeah, um, this got me into the band. Love the jazzy nature of the band. Love how they mixed metalcore and prog so well. Like they did it perfectly. And this is my gateway, so yeah, I gotta give it credit, gotta put it higher than Coma in my opinion. Probably not a popular opinion, but it's my fucking list, so write your own down below. Yeah, Automata, I love both parts. I think the second part is a lot better. So if we're gonna if you know if we're gonna be that fucking guy, Automata one and then Automata two, and then it'll go on to my next one. So what's bloody next, Questy? Well, it's only just the great misdirect yet. The great misdirect is next, and some people don't like this one. Whereas other people think it's like one of the best. Like, I know Jamie Horsley really loves this one. And I really enjoy it as well. But I know some other people that, that don't. Um, this one is fucking fantastic. Holy shit. There's only like six songs. That's ten. There's only six songs. And two of them are really fucking short. So this is, you know, this is exactly the kind of shit I like. You know, I like my Funeral Doom where there's like two songs in a whole album. Yeah. Fucking Yeah. I love every song in this album. This is easily one of Between the Bear and Me's best albums. Oh, the songs, the, the passages within, they melt my fucking eyes. Obfuscation, I don't know if I've said that right, but like the first proper song, the first long song in the album. Holy shit, it's heavy in parts. God damn, that is headbangable in parts. Then it has that kind of Dream Theater-esque breakdown in the second half with a beautiful guitar, almost sounded like Petrucci. Hell yes, that song what a way to kick off an album and there's only like a couple of other songs on it and they're equally as good amazing guitar cool weird parts cool clean parts cool screaming cool heaviness yeah this album's amazing i could easily put this number one but it's between the bear and me and they have a lot of fucking good albums so it's only here so here it comes colors 2 is next i know jamie horsley did a between the bear and me ranking recently and he put this in number one that's fucking wild but it is a wild album. I mean, I put it higher than The Great Misdirect in Coma. Already. And it's been a week. That's how good this album is. It's a worthy sequel. When you put, like, two after a classic album, you better fucking deliver. And oh boy, they goddamn delivered. It's kind of like a parallel to the album. It's like a mirrored version. Kind of like that, that scene in, in, like, Loki or whatever. There's, like, a, a different Lokis. This is a different Loki, basically. Um, same, same, but different. It's amazing. It's flawless. It has, like, all eras of Between the Bear and Me mixed into this one album. I mean, the double helix... What's it called again? The double helix... Uh, fuck. Of Extinction, is that what it's called? The double helix of Extinction. Starting off so goddamn intense, like, it could be on, like, the Silent Circus or, you know, Alaska, which I know I complained about, but in this setting, they make it work so much better. And Bad Habits... With that fucking guitar, the do 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 So catchy, that guitar melody will just be stuck in your head for days. Love that song, love this album. Easily one of the best prog metal albums of the year. You know, without question, without fucking question, Colors 2 is a, it's a work of art. And most bands can't really live up to the most famous album, but somehow Between the Bear and Me did, and almost, almost beat it. 
In my opinion, they didn't quite. I know Jamie thinks of was, but in my opinion, not quite. Still prefer the original, but dog damn, what a great fucking, great fucking album, man. Almost beating it. I mean, think of the other sequels. Queen Operation Minecraft 2. Um, Keeper of the Seventh and Keys Part 3. Not quite as good. Still good. Not quite as good. Um, Abigail 2. You know, loads of, loads of albums that just don't quite reach the potential of the original, but this one fucking does. So Colors 2 is coming here, and that means next up, Shocker, Colors 1. Yep, I know. Colors 1. It's not number 1. Bloody hell, this is the most famous album. Blah, blah, blah. Not my favourite, but god damn, god golly, it's good. It is fucking, it's a classic for a reason. It's one of the best prog metal albums ever fucking made. Like with songs like The Decade of Statues, which is the second part of the first song, sounding kind of like it'd fit right at home on a Deer Side album. Some proper like tech def shit on here. Holy shit. And Ants of the Sky. How insane is that? The fucking... The guitar on Ants of the Sky. Um, that's that title thing. Ants of the Sky is just amazing. It's like Flying Whales. It's so fun to say and it's so fun to fucking listen to. 13 minutes of fucking bliss. And White Walls, what a way to close off the album. White Walls is a masterpiece again, like 14 minutes long. Yeah, yeah, this album's a 10. This album's a fucking 10. It's not even my number one. It's a goddamn 10. You already know that Colors is a great album. I don't need to tell you. You already fucking know it's good. It's coming here. And yeah, you know what's going to be number one then. You know what's going to be number one. It is Parallax 2. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. There's good albums, and then there's masterpieces. This is a masterpiece of an album. You can take your colours, your colours too. You can take your Great Mr. X. Parallax 2, as soon as I heard it, easily my fucking favourite. I'm going to say, I'm going to say the thing fucking Pestilence hates, you cunts. It's spacey. It's got this whole space theme going on, and I fucking love that shit. I dig that shit. And it feels like that on this album. The album's a lot more streamlined. It's just a lot... I don't know, easier to listen to. Um, it's still proggy as hell, but it's just like a, a tighter package, in my opinion. A bit less like crazy, like Colors 2 and Colors 1, but it's more cohesive. I think that's why it's my favourite. Because they're all amazing albums, but this one just, it just works. You know, it just works so well. I don't, I can't put my finger on it. I think that's the reason why, because it's a bit spacey. I, the, the songs, I just like the songs better. And it just feels like a tight package, kind of like Metropolis Part 2 by Dream Theory. It just, it just works, alright? It just fucking works. Some of the songs you just want to listen to and just like lay back in space and just float off into the stars, like Astral Body. How good is that? And then you want to like crash into the fucking moons when, when fucking, I forgot what it's called, Extremophile Elite starts. And you're like, holy shit! Start spinning on the fucking, drifting around the rings of Saturn. Not the band. The rings of Saturn while like gas, gas, gas plays or whatever. Yeah, that's the, this album has it all. It has it fucking all. My favourite is probably Talos. Like the nine minute song on here, the guitar on that is just majestic. The solos are out of this world. The cool like, little, little dancey parts are great. Parallax 2 is easily my favourite as soon as I heard it. Not going to be topped. It's the best fucking Between the Barry and Me album. No questions asked. So that was my list. Hopefully you guys had some fun. Let me know down below what's your favourite Between the Barry and Me albums. What's your least favourite? And we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.